Do you have a patch of ground that has poor soil, hot, dry conditions, and seems to kill everything you plant? Well, watch this and I'll show you a plant that you can use to fill that space. What you're seeing is a plant known as Hori Vervain, a beautiful little wildflower that is sometimes overlooked and passed by without a close inspection, which is a shame because up close it really is beautiful. But why would I spend so much time to make a long profile on this plant? What's special about it? Well, to put it plainly, this pretty little wildflower can grow in some of the most inhospitable soils and conditions on the planet, and thrive while doing so. So in this video, I'll teach you what you need to know to grow it, including what is Hori Vervain and its benefits, the growing conditions and characteristics, how to grow it from seed and save the seed, and you need to know this to maintain it, wildlife and landscaping, and then we will review. So I hope you stick with me and enjoy this profile on this awesome little flower. Okay, so what is Hori Vervain? A Hori Vervain is a herbaceous, short-lived perennial native to Central North America. Scientifically, it's known as Verbena stricta. It can grow two to four feet tall in full sun and well-draining soil. It really flourishes in hot, dry conditions. Blooming purple flowers for at least six weeks in the summer, it attracts numerous species of bee, butterfly, and moth. Now, its native range is primarily Central North America, mainly from roughly the Black Hills of South Dakota, west to Ohio, and from Oklahoma north to Minnesota, Wisconsin, with some isolated pockets in Canada. However, even though it isn't a commonly cultivated plant, it has become established in various states beyond its native range in the Northeast United States and even Arizona, Nevada, and Washington. Benefits. Beauty. Hori Vervain is a beautiful flower. And generally you need a few plants to make a stunning display, but in the right conditions, a single specimen can be gorgeous, putting up a whole lot of stalks. This kind of flower with its narrow spikes can make for a colorful backdrop or a concentrated focal point when contrasted with dark mulch, for example. Long bloom time. This is one of the longest blooming flowers that I've ever grown. I've had blooms begin in early July and continue through mid-August. Basically, it forms these spikes and then it blooms from bottom to top in consecutive order as the flowers are pollinated. Drought tolerant. Okay, so if you need a drought tolerant plant, it is hard to find one that is more drought tolerant that looks this good for so long. Yes, prickly pear cactus bloom too, but for a plant to give you six weeks of color in dry, poor soil conditions, I mean, this plant should win a prize for that. And in case you haven't noticed, I filmed this little section in the Badlands National Park in South Dakota a few years ago. And this is basically a desert, and yet here it is looking great. Okay, time to go into growing conditions and identifications, but I first want to point out that all the info I'm providing, and more, is at an article at my website. Just Google Hori Vervain, grow it, build it, and you'll find it in no time. Growing conditions. All right, so if you made it this far, it should come as no surprise that Hori Vervain likes full sun and dry to medium moist soils. It can tolerate a wide range of pH levels, from slightly acidic to alkaline. For soil texture, it will do best in sandy soil to loam or some kind of loam. Um, and it also, it's best in poor or infertile soils as it can outcompete most other plants that way. But if you have nice fertile soils, it'll often get shaded out by taller plants in the wild. So know your growing conditions. But the most important point here is that your soil needs to drain well. As you can see, I planted these on my little mound in my front yard, so it's always gonna drain. Identification. So the stalks are round, covered in white hairs and are light green when young, but can turn a reddish color when older. The top third of the plant will have branching too for the flower spikes. And for leaves, it has opposite leaves on the stalk with no stem, so the leaves are directly attached to the stalk. They are oval to ovate in shape with a coarse serration on the edge. The upper stalks terminate into spikes of flowers that can range from 2 to 10 inches long overall, and they will be densely covered with uh, buds or blooms. Now the blooming is going to start at the bottom and work its way to the top, and it takes around 6 weeks. An individual flower is pretty small, usually around a quarter inch diameter with five petals that are most often a lavender shade of purple. Rarely the flowers can be pink or white. The root system is both a taproot and fibrous roots, but this plant doesn't need deep soil to survive. It has been used as a component in green roofs where it survived with only rainwater. So not deep soil and only rainwater in Illinois. Okay, so let's talk about how to save seed. So about a month or two after blooming, the spikes will turn brown and dry out. And this is a good time to go get the seed. 
Get a large paper bag and carefully cut the stalk below the spent flowers. Then place this over the bag or container. If you tip it upside down or bump it, a lot of the seeds are going to fall out. So that's why you want to be careful putting it into the bag. But then just set this bag or container somewhere cool and dry for a week or so to make sure there's no surface moisture. And then you can basically shake the bag or the spike into a container or even just tap it on a paper plate and tons of seeds are going to fall out. Uh, there'll be almost no chaff. It's really clean. And then you can just save this in a baggie or an envelope out of the sun for about two to three years in a cool, dry place. Just know that as the seeds get older, the viability will decrease. One other observation on saving seeds is that the seed heads really do persist throughout the winter. So as long as some animal or storm doesn't bump it around too much or knock it over, you can pretty much get seed whenever. Like these stalks right here, I went and clipped off in February when I decided I should winter sow some more. So I just went out to my plants, clipped off some stalks, and brought them in and just tapped the stalks on the plate per plate and planted them directly. How to grow it from seed. So Hori Vivane will need a cold, moist stratification period of roughly two months to break dormancy, as well as being exposed to sunlight. So to achieve the cold stratification requirement, you can either cold stratify it in the refrigerator in like a towel baggie or winter sow it. I have videos on both of these methods that I will reference in the cards at the top right as well as down below. My personal preference though, winter sow it. It's just easier. But in general, whether planting stratified seed or winter sowing, you'll fill a suitable container with moist potting soil and then scatter some seed onto the soil surface. Press them firmly into it with your thumb or hand, ensuring that there's good contact, but don't bury them because they need sunlight to help break dormancy. Place that container in a location that'll get morning sun and afternoon shade. And then germination should occur, you know, in mid-spring. And this is what the seedlings look like right after germination, the cotyledons. And then here it is a little more advanced with true leaves. One other note on growing it from seed, depending on the growing conditions that you plant it in and how well it's maintained, you can get it to bloom the first year. What you see here are plants that are blooming in their pots that I grew from seed this year. And I just hadn't gotten around to transplanting them yet. Okay, let's talk about wildlife. When it comes to wildlife, numerous pollinators are attracted to this flower. It's an excellent nectar source and over 120 species of pollinators have been documented visiting it. This would include various short and long-tongued bees, butterflies, moths, hummingbirds, and pollinating flies. Now, this is a native plant and it should be noted that while most pollinators are there for nectar, there is at least one specialist bee that will visit for pollen only, known as Calliopsis nebraskensis. Also, Hori vervain is a host plant for at least two species of moth. And finally, birds will eat the seeds, mainly in the winter, and since the seed isn't rigidly held on the stalks, a decent amount of it's going to be found underneath the plant and they'll pick it up from the ground. Deer and rabbits. So for deer and rabbits, I've never seen any damage to my plants. When it comes to verbena genus in general, their leaves have a strong aroma, and this is probably what protects them from being eaten. Landscaping. So Hori Vervain is an easy plant to landscape with in the right growing conditions. It's the absolute perfect place for drought, dry, prone areas that drain. Um, it could be a really good candidate for a hell strip too. But its light purple color makes it easy to blend with most other plants. So other purple plants, something like some kind of uh, drought tolerant Liatris or Anise Hyssop or yellow sunflowers would work well together. I have a list of species that would be for good pairing at my website. But the main thing to note about landscaping with Hori Vervain is that it is short-lived. I haven't had a plant live more than three years, so you should plan on either scattering seed yourself or winter sowing it every other year to maintain a population. And speaking of scattering seed, let's talk about self-seeding. This plant will self-seed to a limited extent. It doesn't really do so that much though, at least in a mulch flower bed where I've grown it. You know, there's maybe 20 seedlings per year. But this self-seeding will help maintain the population as you can simply transplant flowers around as needed to replace any that died from old age. So take a good look at these right here. These are seedlings of Hori Vervain. Um, I didn't plant them, they just showed up and it's easy to transplant them in spring when the temperatures are cooler. Okay, time to review. Hori Vervain is a short-lived wildflower native to Central North America, although it has become established in other parts of the country. It is one of the best plants to grow in hot, dry, drought-prone areas provided that the soil drains well. And it's a wonderful plant for attracting pollinators, proven by the fact that over 100 species have been documented visiting. And it is a host plant for at least two moths. Easily grown from seed, it will bloom the first year depending on the growing conditions. 
but know that you will need to either rely on cell seeding or winter sow it periodically yourself to maintain a population due to its short life. But okay, that's all I've got for you. If you got any questions, please ask in the comments and I'll do my best to answer them. You all have a good one.